um, look, they, where America stands is here, where we're at a place where 64 percent of the nation are concerned that the growing criticism of America's police will lead to a shortage of police officers. That will harm all Americans. It's an untenable principle, and it's unacceptable when you have people like Representative um, Ocasio-Cortez really suggesting where the Democrat Party stands today, because taking a billion away from NYPD police officers wasn't enough for her. She wants to take it all away. She doesn't want police officers, um, and that's a really unacceptable proposition. That's exactly right. Instead of retracting those stories, they won Pulitzers of those stories at the Washington Post and the New York Times for lying about the witch hunt against the president of the United States. They were dead wrong, uh, but they, they don't apologize. They don't give back the Pulitzers as they should. Uh, what's so egregious about this, Sean, uh, and particularly with the Tom Cotton op-ed, you know, we use the briefings and we highlight people whose names are not mentioned in many mainstream publications, like David Dorn, the police officer who lost his life in the riots. And how ironic uh, that the New York Times, rather than highlighting this tragic story that deserved attention, they instead censor a piece that mentions and talks about the violence and the riots. And that, of course, is Senator Tom Cotton's op-ed. It's really egregious. You know, the world has changed, Kaylee. You know, Rush Limbaugh syndicated in 1988. There are only 200 talk stations. It's the number one format in radio, over 3,000 now, AM and FM. The president has 200, and I don't know the total, in terms of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, over 200 plus million people he can go directly to. He doesn't need them. Now, you have to, the many in talk radio. I support the president's policies openly. I don't hide it. And I'm proud of it, proud of his accomplishments. You don't really have to talk to these people anymore. Does, I don't think the president needs to ever argue with them again. It's a waste of time. You're exactly right, and that's what drives them nuts, Sean. You have the Democrats who engage in basket of deplorable politics, like Hillary Clinton. We're all in the basket of deplorables, and you have the Washington Post saying, oh, it's actually more than half of the country, uh, that half of Trump supporters that are in the basket of deplorables. And you have the media doing the bidding work of the left, and it drives them nuts that this president worked around them, spoke directly to the American people, more than 200 million followers, and that direct connection to the American people is what perturbs them uh, and drives them to be even more or insane in their coverage of this president. There are questions about mail, mass mail out voting, yeah, and I right. know you don't want to hear them, which is why you talk it? over me. Okay. But I encourage you to okay, read the op ed. Yes. On the China vaccine research, this yes. is very. You've gotten two questions, which is more than some of your colleagues. Yes. Today, the nation's top counterintelligence official said that Russia is one of three countries that is actively working to interfere in our election. Did the president bring up election interference on the call with the Russian president yesterday? Again, I wasn't on the call, um, but the president, I was not on the call. Um, the president, but the president has taken more actions for election security than his predecessor, who gave a stand down order when he learned about election interference. Susan Rice gave that stand down order. Um, Obama's intel chief even confirmed that stand down order was given. By contrast, we've uh, given a numer a ton of funding to election security. We take our election seriously, and we believe in election Trump integrity. My question Justin. is, did President Trump Justin. bring it up on the call? Justin, I was not answer. on the call, Caitlin. Stop so filibustering. Not. Justin, let your colleagues ask questions. Memorials, names, and uh, the president has repeatedly inserted himself into this debate. And I think a lot of people are trying to understand what his view of uh, memorializing the Confederacy is and the proper place of the Confederate flag. So a couple questions. One, does he believe, does President Trump believe that it was a good thing that the South lost the Civil War? And then two, is he interested in following NASCAR's example and banning the Confederate flag at his own events? Well, your first question is absolutely absurd. He's proud of the United States of America. Um, second, with regard to our statues, um, Americans oppose tearing down our statues. There is a Harvard-Harris poll released just last week that shows 60 percent of respondents said the statues should remain, and 71 percent said local governments should block groups from physically destroying the statues. So he stands on the side of preserving our history. The question was actually about the Confederate flag at his rallies. Will he, is he interested in banning?
banning the Confederate flag at his rallies? That would be a question for his campaign, but look, this president's focused on taking action, on fixing problems. It's why he had his executive order just a few weeks ago to keep our streets safe and secure. That's where his focus lies, and um, I think that those who are tearing down statues, they do appear to have no ideology when they're tearing down statues uh, and defacing statues of Matthias Baldwin, an abolitionist, um, Hans Christian Hegg, who died fighting for the Union Army during the Civil War, um, a memorial for African American soldiers who fought in the Civil War was damaged in Boston, and a monument to fallen police officers was vandalized in Sacramento. This is unacceptable. It's why the president took strong action. It's why, as an executive order, saying those tearing down statues will be punished to the fullest extent of the law. It's why four people will charge. He will not stand for lawlessness and chaos. He stands with the 71 percent of Americans who say there is no place for tearing down statues, as these anarchists are doing across the nation. I think you're getting ahead of the president here. He's, he's made no announcements as to who's going where. He's very discouraged by the violence that he's seen in Chicago. It's why he sent um, a very strong letter to Mayor Lightfoot offering help, because she's clearly unable to control her streets, um, and the governor as well, unable to control that area. Um, when you see the fact that there were 49 officers who were injured in this egregious video of them being lambasted with um, rioters with umbrellas, shielding from view that they were throwing projectiles and 49 officers injured. Not only that, the, the poor citizenry of Chicago, where 12 were murdered this weekend, um, 70 shot alone. Uh, it's incredible what we're seeing in Chicago. He's offered his help, and we encourage the mayor to take it uh, and to be forthright about the situation in her state, much like uh, the governor of Missouri was in working with us on Operation Legend to protect the people of Missouri. But the leaders of these cities don't necessarily want unmarked police officers patrolling their streets the way we've seen in Portland with the premise that they're protecting federal property there. The leaders in these cities don't want this Sort of paramilitary they're, police force. They're offered the assistance of DOJ, as was done, um, where you've had FBI surge in the case of Operation Legend. Um, so when you have each weekend more than a dozen people getting shot in your city, perhaps it's time, um, more than a dozen killed, I should say, and children, perhaps it's time to say, I need the help of the federal government because I'm, what I'm doing is simply not working when more people are dying on the streets of Chicago than Afghanistan and Iraq. It's a tragedy. <laughs>